Hi, I'm Mark, one third of Trade in the Market, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to select a horse. More importantly, how to select a winning horse. I already know what you're thinking. What system or pay for services is going to try and sell me in this video? Well, in fact, there is no system and nothing to sign up to. You can put the calculators away and get yourself a pen and paper. This is a selection video aimed at people who want to make a more informed decision on selecting horses and picking a few more winners. We'll be covering some of the basics like what is OR and TS and what is a jockey's claim anyway. Then we'll look at some of the races for this evening's racing at Newcastle and select the first few races and see how we get on. This is not an exact science or a perfect formula to winning. Horses are animals and because of that they do their own thing from time to time. They have their off days and days where they're not 100% but we are not looking for excuses, we're looking for winners. A little about me before we get started. I'm trading the market's horse racing expert. Now I'm not an expert on horses or an expert on racing, I'm the horse racing expert. As a mathematician and statistician, I love data and the amount of data that you have available to you in horse racing is ideal. Now it's easy to get carried away and start looking at every time the horse had a run out and what the ground and the weather was like on that day and which way the wind was blowing or how many races there were before your horse race last and to see how compressed the ground was. By the way, I said it's easy to get carried away, not easy to do. The fact of the matter is, there are so many variables that add more weight to the outcome that are not recorded or considered. It's impossible to make a judgement based on all of that. For example, another horse might have bumped into your horse and broke its stride. It might have been pushed out wide on a bend, or sad to say, the yard could be putting it out for a run that day and had no want or belief that the horse would win. So if you manage to stay with me after all the negatives and still want to learn more, then welcome to our video and consider yourself one of the enlightened. So let's jump over and have a look at the race card and quickly cover off some of the basics. For this we are going to be looking at the racingpost.com. As we will be picking from it, we will be looking at the 1655 at Newcastle, the first race off. The AW in brackets means all weather, 1 mile 4.5 furlongs is the race length which we can see is 1 mile 4 furlongs and 98 yard race. Quimbet is the sponsor name given for the race and it's a handicap class 4 race. Classes work like football leagues, the better you are the higher class you will race in. It's for 4 years or older and you have to be an official rating of 0 to 85 to enter. Now that is the top line covered so let's have a look at the favourite and talk you over what all the numbers mean so we'll be looking at blow your horn. We'll start from the left, the number 5 is the racehorse number assigned to this horse and has no bearing on anything and helps us in no way. So moving on, the 2 in the brackets is the stall that it's been drawn in. Depending on the length of the race and the layout of the course, this will matter is if you get drawn in a stall that is considerably distance from the rail, then you, as soon as you have the race around a bend, you're going to be out wide at running the extra distance over to join the other horses on the rail. Under this, we'll show you the form of the horse. So in this case, the horse finished 4th, 4th, had a break, and then came back and finished 3rd, 4th, and 2nd. Now we'll take these numbers with a pinch of salt. As a horse finishing 4th in a 14th horse race is some going, and a horse finishing 4th in a 4 horse race is poor. Or no, again, depending on the class of the race the horse was running in. Now we see it says 8 tips on this horse. Before that, you may see a letter combination of letters of C, D, C, D, B, F. As we can see a couple of other horses have D on them. The D means it won at this distance at another race course. C means it won at this course before. So C, D means it won at this course and this distance. And lastly, B, F means beat favourite. Then we move on to the age of the horse. The horse is a four year old, but don't be fooled into thinking that because a horse is younger, it will run quicker or that the older horse will struggle against the younger ones. WGT stands for weight, so this horse is 8 stone 13 pound. So, so far we've looked at a lot of data on this horse, and for any novice that might be trying to learn how to compare all these different stats against each other, may feel a little overwhelmed by all this, but don't fear, after so many races a horse is given an OR, which stands for official rating. After each race, the rating is adjusted to match how the horse did and they factor in all the elements such as distance it won by, what class it was racing in. Now I like using the official rating, but I much prefer the RPR at the end which stands for Racing Post Racing. I feel this number gives you a better all-rounded view of the horse. 
Imagine having a team of experts looking at every horse and judging its ability by races it run and by how it performed against other horses. A team of people whose full-time job is to study horse races and data. To have a team like that would cost you a fortune and you would have to win a lot of races to pay for them. What if I said there's a team of people willing to do this for free and they do it well as the quality of the data adds credibility to their name? Are you asking where can I find such a team? Well look no further than the Racing Post rating. Simple when you think about it, it's these people's job to do the legwork, so let's take note of what they advise. So in the case of Blow Your Horn, it has a Racing Post rating of 98, which in this race is the highest rating. And considering to enter into this race you need an official rating of 0 to 85, if you have a Racing Post rating of 98, in my view you're probably better than your racing official rating. Now let's just cover the last bits of information on this horse. The TS is the top speed of the horse. We'll ignore the odds for now, but we'll come back to them. The J indicates the jockey being Jamie Spencer and the T means Charlie Fellows is a trainer. We can see that this horse has eight tips on it from the different press outlets. And again, I'm not a fan of the tips. So when you look at these people's run rates, you can see at level state, that more often than not, they do not make any money. To the right of the tips is number 18. This is how many days it's been since the horse last run. There is so much more we can look at when it comes to horse racing and so much more information that we don't need. But we can have more of an advanced look in another video. Otherwise, this will be a feature length film if I go on too long. As we've already studied a horse in this first card, let's pick a horse from this race. Now we've covered all the data from Blow Your Horn, let's compare it to other horses. We can see it has the best RPR but not the best official rating. Like I said, I'm going to go with the RPR. Some of the horses have won races at this distance, but none at this course. So that takes the advantage out of that. Now let's look at the spotlight comments. These give you a little blurb about the horse. And in this race, looking across the spotlight comments, I can see Blow Your Horn handles this type of surface. And a horse running on this surface type for the first time can tend to struggle, as horses primarily run on grass. So on this occasion, I'm going to back blow your horn for this race it's as simple as that well before we all load some money onto our betting apps let's see if it wins first I will back this on Skybet and we will come back when the race is going behind I've recorded the race using the racing post site and moved it to picture in picture so let's see how I get on Boom, blow your horn brings it home. It was a close race that, I know what you're thinking, anybody could pick a favourite. So let's look at the next race and see what we can pick. So I'm moving on to the 1725 at Newcastle. This is the next race at Newcastle. This is a much harder race to pick as it's a maiden race. It has far less data and the small sample size of data we have means it's a small sample of data for the racing post rating. So let's go straight to the spotlight comments. Now I like the look of the favourite here, but I think the other horses are untested. I'm going to go with an outsider on the bigger odds and use a quarter of a point. I'm going to go with Blue Nose Bell. You can go each way on this horse based on the price, but a quarter of a point, I'm going to take the chance. They're ready and they're off. 
and they're preparing to turn in. Just over three furlongs are left to gallop. Tropical Cyclone taken on for the lead now by Sky Tree. Those two are with the Blue Nose Bell, Pale Blue Jacket to the far side, Eurabe. Maytal is closest to the running rail to make a run. Behind the leaders is Cedar Stars. Bell Letra work to do so to Golden B Blue Bugle. A furlong and a half left to go and it is Blue Nose Bell now being pestered for the lead by Maytal and Eurabe. Cedar Stars is staying on and it is Blue Nose Bell is still digging deep and still holding them all at bay. Blue Nose Bell by just over a length to Cedar Stars and May Talon in the run to the line. It's Blue Nose Bell and PJ McDonald. They will collect. Boom. What an absolute fantastic race. I really didn't think after it set off it had any chance of getting up towards the front. I was pretty much tearing up my bet slip. Well, I would do, but it's a better nap. Unbelievable. Absolutely fantastic. Um, it shows that any horse can win a race and I'm quite pleased with that so let's move on to the 1755 at Newcastle we're going to change the way we do this a little bit instead of me talking you through all the horse stats I want you to pause the video look down at the race card all the information you have and then pause it on the spotlight comments and have a go at selecting the horse that you would pick if you could place the bet now using the information I give you including the racing post rating the information in the spotlight comments don't be worried about not picking a favorite but also don't be worried about if you do pick the favorite it's a completely free choice keep it write it down i will watch the race come back and i'm going to place a bet on uh, sky bet and i will reveal which horse i selected at the end of this video so let's watch the race and see if you pick the winner and they're off Seville the Star a little slow to go, just being pushed along to go forward as well. Lightning Blue was away smartly with Briar Dale, and right there, Despoiner on the wide outside is Majalart, and Majalart's coming through to have the overall advantage over Briar Dale. Back in behind these, Despoiner, Melgate, Majeur, Lightning Blue, then comes So Match over Tease in the Pink Jacket. Back in midfield, followed by Party Planner, My Boy Lewis is next ahead of Clifftop Heaven. As they move on down the far side, Zabil stars at the back end of the field. It is Majalart who makes the running. Uh, Majalart in front by about three lengths to the red car scorer, Briardale, second place. Two lengths away is Despoiner. Lightning Blue Yellow Jacket is up along the inside. Melgate Majeur is towards the outer as they continue their work down the back. Uh, they're being followed by So Macho Vertice, and then comes Party Planner. My Boy Lewis is towards the back end of the field with Clifftop Heaven and Zabil. Field star remains in rear. Five furlongs left to go, and it is Majalart towing them along and leads by a good three lengths from Briardale in second place. In third is Despoiner as they now run towards the turn in. So matches two lengths further back with Melgate Majeur to the outer. Lightning Blue Vertice, Party Planner, My Boy Lewis, Clifftop Heaven. They're following, and Sabeel Star is still last. Preparing to turn in, three and a half furlongs to go, and Majalart will turn into the straight in front for Oliver Stammers, but Briardale is is on the scene for PJ McDonald. Despoiner is hanging for pressure back in third place. Vertice is attempting to progress. Melgate Majeur being pushed along. So Macho towards the far side with Lightning Blue. Entering the final quarter of a mile. Majalart is making them a go here. Briardale with a big effort to the near side in the green and yellow jacket. So it's Majalart and Briardale. Those two a few lengths to Vertice is certainly staying on. They're inside the final furlong and it is Majalart proving a tough nut to crack here. Maj Majalart, Briardale right alongside. Don't rule out Vertice, but Briardale is getting there with every stride. That was hard work, but in the end, Briardale got there. Briardale beat Majalart, Vertice. Absolute fantastic result for Briardale in this race. Some credit to the jockey, but he still sat on the back of a good horse for this class and this particular race. I'm going to reveal who I picked at the end of this video. I was only going to do three races, but we're doing so well. Let's have a look at doing the next race at Newcastle. And I hope you had the win in the last one. So we're now going to look at the 625 at Newcastle. Let's do the same again. Remember to ignore the tips and use the information they're giving you and the spotlight comments. Pause again. Pick your horse. We will watch the race. And again, I will show you my Skybet account for the four races at the end of this video. And they're off. Racing over a mile and a quarter for the Quinbet.com handicap. Zeeham and Intercessor away okay with the second slip to the wide outside. Breguet Boy to the inner. Red Jacket of Vanity Affair behind the leaders. 
Forming their early order, the back marker is Civil Law. So it is Intercessor making the running by a length and a half to Zeharm. Break of about three lengths to Brege Boy, who sits in third place. Another two and a half to Vanity Affair and Jamie Spencer. Second slip just taken back in the field. Second slip racing in fifth spot, being followed by Francisco Bay. He's got the blue sleeves to the inside running rail. Now Children is further back, followed by Civil Law. So they're fairly well spaced out in the early stages of the contest. This is intercessor Dara Keenan in front as they continue their run down the far side of the track. So it is intercessor Zihan Brege Boy, Vanity Affair, second slip, Francisco Bay, now children and civil law. And they're now running towards the halfway marker with a good 15 lengths, I'd say, first to last at this stage. Intercessor and Zeharm occupying the first two places, and they are split by a couple of lengths. Break then of about five lengths to Brege Boy. Another four lengths to Vanity Affair, chased by second slip Francisco Bay. Civil Law is at the back end of the field at present with now children. Approaching the turn in. So just less than half a mile to go, and it is Intercessor Zeharm. They are beginning to close in now behind the pace setter, with Brege Boy back in third spot. Just in behind these is Vanity Affair, and then Francisco Bay second slip with the orange and yellow jacket. Civil Law is next, and now Children running down towards the final quarter of a mile. Intercessor far side, Brege Boy being asked for a big effort to the near side, and then comes Vanity Affair second slip is trying to progress. Francisco Francisco Bay is behind the leaders, running down towards the last furlong. Brege Boy is just about in front here from Vanity Affair and second slip. Brege Boy being tackled for the lead by Vanity Affair. Second slip is running on Vanity Affair. However, it's just about in front. Vanity Affair goes on to win. It's Charlie Fellows and Jamie Spencer again. Vanity Affair the winner. Vanity Fair takes that by about half a length. We'll wait for the official results to come out, but Vanity Fair is the winner. I hope you pick the winner. Again, another favourite. Not always the case, but uh, favourites are favourites for a reason sometimes. Now, I hope, like I say, you had the winner in that race. I'm now going to show onto the screen the four races at Newcastle in order from my Skybet account from the 1655 where we started to the 625 on the last race. And as you can see, I had Blow Your Horn Blue Nose Bella, or Blue Nose Bell, Brydale, and Vanity Fair. That's four out of four. I was not expecting when I'm recording this video to have four selections out of four. Uh, I wanted to show that it works sometimes and you get three out of four, or even two out of four if you make profit back. But I'm so pleased to be getting four out of four. It doesn't always happen and you won't always pick the winner. Uh, on larger odd horses, it probably is better to go each way where I like a, bit, a little bit of a risk. How about you put into the comments what factors you use for when you're picking a horse and let's stay away from I like the name or it was a nice colour. If you have liked this video, please drop us a like. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when the next video goes up. I've been Mark, this has been Trading the Market, that was Horse Selections and until next time, happy trading.